Hello and thanks for swinging by to a new episode of Knobs and Switches. Today it's a special episode because it's a double feature. On the first half I will show my trusty old Yamaha CP30 electronic piano. And on the second half we will send the CP30 to a bunch of boutique style effects pedals from the German manufacturer B-Box. Stay tuned. Yes, that's the holy grail of electronic pianos. The Fender Rhodes 73 and the Berlitzer EP200A. Brilliant equipment, but unfortunately today very expensive. I'm sitting here on my Yamaha CP30 electric piano, released by Yamaha in 1976 together with his smaller brother, the Yamaha CP20. Both are real analog instruments without any mechanical parts like tines or reeds except of the weighted keyboard action like on a traditional piano. The CP30 comes with a lid and this lid is detachable in two halves and these two halves you can use as a stand for the CP30. The CP20 and the CP30 are basically real analog synthesizers but with only a few parameter options. In this case the CP30 is a double feature version of the CP20. The CP20 only have 61 keys and only one channel for sounds and the CP30 has 76 keys and two channels. List price of the CP30 in 1977 in Germany was 3590 Deutschmarks. It was used prominently by Herbie Hancock on his Sunlight EP, live from Barclay James Harvest on the Ice of the Universe tour in 1980, Christine McVie from Fleetwood Mac replaced her old Honor Pianet N with a CP30 on the 1979 Tusk Tour. Ultravox used it live and also Gary Newman on the Farewell Tour 1981. Okay, back from history to hardware. The CP30 is very well designed, very slim with a flat top, so you are able to put other keyboards, drum computers, or even your notebook on top of it. On the right side we have three separate outputs, one for each channel and a mix output. 
and we have an input for a tremolo on off switch and an input for a sustain pedal. Starting on the left side with the two pitch controller so you are able to detune it and get a chorus like effect. Then you have two controllers for decay. You have a tremolo unit with speed and intensity and separate rocker switches for each channel. You have the four preset buttons piano one, piano two, piano three and harpsichord on channel one and you have the same one, two, three and four on channel two. At the end you have a balance controller, a kind of lame equalizer with bass and treble and a volume control. That's all. We check now how it sounds.
So, may you get an impression of the sound possibilities of the CP30. This is actually my fourth CP30. Whenever I sold it, I start to miss the sound and start to looking for a new one again. My first CP30 I got in 1982. I swapped it for my very first keyboard, a CRB Electronica Diamond 701A combo organ. And with the CP30, my journey into rock and roll starts from this point. The only issue with the CP30 is the very loud and noisy keyboard action. I remember when I lived in my first apartment directly under the roof. Every time when I rehearsed on the CP30, my neighbors were coming upstairs and knocking on my door. And they are totally annoyed about the noises coming from my apartment. And it wasn't the noise from the speakers, it was the noise from the keyboard action. Because the vibrations were going directly to the floor and they told me it sounds like I have elephants in my apartment. So that was quite funny. Not for my neighbors. Okay, but uh, anyway, we have to check now this with the nice FX pedals. Now it's hooked up and ready to go, but before we start, what's B-Box? B-Box is Becker Music, located in Bochum, Germany, a manufacturer of boutique-style FX pedals. And the tech guy, Marcus Becker, is my choice for repairing vintage gear since decades. He was a guy, he made it possible that I use Polymook and other vintage stuff on stage for years. He bring the Polymook often back to life again and uh, repaired my Moog CDX organ. He is also the guy he was able to repair a 4012 capsuled filter module from my R2600. So on the bottom line he is a genius when it comes to repairing audio equipment and inventing some interesting stuff. Marcus' first effect pedal was a classic AX1, a recreation of the famous Ibanez Tube Screamer TS-808 followed by an UV-1 uh, Uniwipe kind of thing and also a Tremolux, it's a tremolo effect. But today we have here the B-Box Ottawa filter pedal. It's a modulation pedal like the Electro Harmonix Qtron or the Mutron 3 by Mike Bigel. It's here on the B-Box the same circuit as on the Mutron 3, but Marcus added some uh, new features. First he changed the voltage from 18 to 9 volt to make it more usable with normal uh, Walmart power supplies. Then he extended the peak range and we got now a separate sense controller for sensitivity. And you got now a second up and down switch. With this switch you are able to switch between two presets. If the LED is off, you can use for the up position, low pass, bump pass and high pass filter setting. And if the LED is on, then you are in the down position and you can choose also a different filter setting. So low pass, bump pass 
and high pass. So for a live situation it's easy to switch between these two presets and you have still this on off switch. Coming up next is the B-Box MF513 modulation filter. It's a MOOC style 24 dB cascade filter panel with parameters for resonance, cutoff or frequency. The frequency is con controllable by an external expression pedal. For this you need a 3.5 mm jack. There is a dry wet level controller so uh, on the right side you have no effect at all and on the other side you have only the wet signal. There is a modulation depth control, a volume control and a fancy LFO section. You have a controller for rate and the rate is switchable normal tempo, half time tempo and double speed. You see this uh, and you can check the rate by the LED and you have the waveforms sine, triangle and sample and hold. Sadly the sample and hold is not externally lockable. Thank you. 
So, coming up next is the B-Box RM1013 ring modulator. It's built in the tradition of the famous Electroharmonix frequency analyzer or Maestro ring modulator or also the Muga Fuga MF102. We have a wet dry mix controller, a controller for the frequency modulation depth and again the nice LFO section you have a control for rate and you have uh, the possibility for normal tempo double tempo or half tempo and you have the LFO waveforms sign square and sample and hold of course here's the volume knob and these both inputs are modifications by Marcus. So I'm able now to use my Eurorack modular as an external modulation source as well. Coming up now, the icing of the cake of the B-Box range, the modulation delay. It's an analog mono delay. You've got a mono input, a mono output. A delay, a delay time from 60 milliseconds up to 1100 milliseconds. You have a controller for feedback. You have a wet dry mix controller. And you have the modulation possibility the controller for the delay time of the modulation and the intensity of the modulation, it's called mix. The modulation sources are the waveforms sine, square and again sample and hold with double speed, normal speed or half speed. You have an independent speed or rate dial. 
and you have the great possibility to tap tempo maybe only the LFO or if you like only the delay or maybe both great is also that you can trigger the delay externally and now you are able to make great and interesting glitches cause you can change the tempo of the delay time and after three steps you are back in time again. I forgot to mention the insert. It's in send. A return for feedback, a return for delay. And you have an input for a foot controller to control the delay time. But it's also possible to use a CV signal like an LFO or an envelope to modulate this. It's kind of interesting and great for bizarre effects. The B-Box Black Devil is an extended distortion pedal. You have a controller for drive, an equalizer with bass, middle and treble. You have a controller for the output volume and a 
presence controller. There is a possibility to switch from normal to boost and you have two different filter modes, one and two. At the end of the chain is the B-Box FAS 1.0. It's a classic FAS box in the tradition of the famous Electroharmonix Big Muff. You have the controller for sustain, tone and volume. But with the addition of an octave switch, you put and add an octave to your signal and you have the possibility to spice it up this octave signal with a drive controller. For the quick jam I've set up my Arturia Drum Brute Impact. They will synchronize by MIDI the Beatstep Pro and the Moog Matriarch. The Beatstep Pro only triggers the clock of the modulation delay and the, the both LFOs of the Moog Matriarch will send CV signals or CV values to my ring modulator.
Conclusion. The Wurlitzer and the Fender Rhodes are still the big boys on the block. That's for sure. But why not trying out something different? The CP30 is a real analog instrument with expression and a kind of unique sound and it fits very well in my opinion with FX pedals. So if you have the space cause it's massive Go out and search for one. Go to Reverb.com, Craigslist, eBay Kleinanzeigen or even on the garage sale. I think if you have one you can spend a lot of fun time with it and you come up with unique sounds, I'm sure. FX pedals. Honestly, I have to say, I'm a huge fan of the B-Box pedals from Marcus. They are all analog, well built and they have this scientific feel that you have you feel you are in a, in a lab finding out new sounds and exploring new things the ring modulator is is very cool with the sample and hold possibility and the extra inputs for bizarre modulations the delay is very cool for soundscapes and delay parts they are go far from a normal tap delay. The Black Devil distortion fits very well together with the Ottawa. You are able to coming up with great howling sounds. The Ottawa is very very close to the original Mutron 3 plus additional features. The multi filter Reminds me a lot to the sample and hold option in the Maestro USS1 unit. In my opinion, or for me, the resonance here could be a bit more upfront. It's the control range is very subtle and it nothing happened so much. You are if you are working with synthesizers, you are um, you like it to tweak the resonance and get some results. Here is it very subtle. 
but maybe it's it fits better on guitars but the quality of the filter and the swirliness of the sample in hold I like it it's great so go on the website from Marcus contact him try the pedals and I'm sure you will buy one thanks for watching hope we will see us soon have fun and stay healthy. Bye.